light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness, and shine within your people here. Light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face. You who see creation's story shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts up. stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms a weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make splendor, every dancing star of night, make us shine with gentle justice, let us each reflect your light, mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way, loving spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. God be with you all, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe, from all you have led your peace by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright, for your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of side, please join us on part one, and if you're on the pulpit side, please join us on part two. an offering to you. Oh God, I call to you. Oh God, to I call to you. Oh Come hear to me my now, when I oh hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise Let up, my prayer rise like, up incense. like incense before you. <coughs> the lifting up of 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround us and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. A reading from Luke chapter 10. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals. Do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. The Seventy-two returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submitted to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, Jesus, full of, the, of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and no one knows who the Father is except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Then He turned to His disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. This is the word of our Lord. I invite you to pray with me. Jesus, be with us. Teach us to pray and send us in your name. Amen. Well, as you've just heard, Jesus said, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out more workers. Keep in mind, He's gathered 72, way more than the 12 that He started with. And as He sends them out with these words, <laughs> reminding them that they are lambs among the wolves, don't take along any extra provisions, just go. And it's interesting that he asked them to pray for more workers, which is interesting because when they go out as 72 in 36 different pairs to all these different surrounding towns that Jesus was heading out to, they don't add to their number in that the 36 pairs turn into 40 pairs and doubling into, you know, and then taking it times 1,000, you know, it, they come back as 36 pairs, 72. So did they not do the simple thing to ask the Lord of the harvest? Or was the prayer just not answered? Well, of course, neither were true. They did pray. They had to pray for the Lord's discernment, of what to do and how to do it. He has given them authority to walk on snakes and scorpions. Even the demons submit to their voice, because it comes in the name and the power and authority of Jesus. So, how did this happen? The, uh, where did the extra workers come from? Well, it comes from the houses that they went to stay in. Jesus said, you're looking for people of peace, and when you find somebody, let your peace rest on them and stay in that house. Don't wander around from the next house to the next eat whatever they give you, okay, and stay there. Now, that's a simple marketing practice. You don't want the disciples to be hard to find, right? They're doing all these miracles out in the community, and, and 
where should we go? Oh, we're going over to, you know, that house over there. That's where they're staying. And so the multiplication would come, and the people that lived in that house, there would be at least two to six, maybe ten people in that house. And then for every person that's been healed or a demon cast out, there would be two to six to ten, even more friends and relatives, right? And when you start multiplying by 36s, all of these two to ten groups, it doesn't take long to turn into uh, thousands, maybe even tens of thousands, maybe even more. So that when the disciples come back and they're like so jazzed about everything that they got to do, Jesus is just overcome with joy. I saw Satan fall like lightning as he assumes his rightful place in the universe as the one who truly is in charge, overcome with joy and, and just cries out to the Father, thank you so much. And then he wants to let everyone else in on the secret. You get to see something no one else gets to see. Wow. Well, as we now go into our third week of just or why pray, we're being invited to pray for our neighbors, pray for our, our communities that surround us and neighborhoods. And it's so a little bit frustrating when we hear about these amazing stories as the 72 went out and they had such a great return that even Jesus was like, whoa. And then when we read in uh, Just Pray from John DeVries about all the amazing things God did in India. I mean, wow, a group of people just started praying, and, and then amazing things happened. You might remember, if you've been reading along, there was a man by the name of Mr. Ditt, and he was in the lowest class, outcast, untouchable, and um, the Christian community had been working to have some converts, and finally this one man it turns to Jesus and receives him as, as his Lord and and. and they said, well, you need to come live with us because your people are going to hurt you. And he's like, no, no, I got to go live in my, in my community. And sure enough, his brother just about did kill him. But within a few days, he brings to the compound, the Christian compound, uh, his wife and daughter for holy baptism. And they're like, well, how, how can they be ready? And they start quizzing them like, wow, this man who knew very little about Jesus prepared them for baptism. Over 30 years, this man was used by God to touch over 300,000 people to know Jesus. And you're like, okay, that's pretty amazing. But the stories just keep coming. We, we've got uh, Stephen, and he, he was on the other end of the spectrum in India. He's not the low, he's at the highest of the high. He's a Brahmin. And, and they live along a river. On one side of the river are the rich, and on the other side of the river are the not. And the knots were praying the people on the other side. Well, this man had a wife who had been sick for 20 years, and, and they'd been to everyone, to regular doctors and even the witch doctor, and nothing was helping. But the people on the other side of the river were praying for him, not knowing that it would be him, but praying for him that there would be someone from the Brahmin uh, class, caste, that would then be a missionary into that group of people. And so the man hears them singing and praying, and he goes out, and you know, what's going on? And, and finally, um, the communication is that we're praying for you. And, and, and he talks about his wife, and his wife is healed. And they become somebody that goes out to pray and to share Jesus. Over 200 people come to faith as God used them as witnesses. It's like... Well, that's pretty amazing, right? You know, it happens in the New Testament, happens in India. Does it happen to us? Well, yeah. Don't you remember? Um, thousands of people through Pastor Mike taking us over to Tanzania are now part of the Christian faith. I mean, thousands. And um, in Brazil, we've been supporting uh, the, the Abrace Daycare. And it's not, it's not an exaggeration to say that there are tens to hundreds of people. And in Good Shepherd and Holy Trinity uh, Institute in Brazil, 
We've helped touch a lot of people with Jesus just in those two countries, but it keeps going on. In, in India, our mission partners in India, the people that would never have heard about Jesus are hearing about Him. And in Taiwan, in China, uh, Wichita, <laughs> Pratt, our open arms. Do you know how many children our open arms ministry has touched since 2002? Some of those children have grown up and they brought their children to open arms. Many children have brought their children and grandchildren to our preschool and our VBSs. Hundreds, thousands. Yeah, but is it, is God going to use me? I mean, come on, what more do we have to say to you? Of course He's going to use you. He has been using you and our prayers. But do we believe it? in the sense that I will actually pray for my neighbors. Our family worked through this book in, about a year ago, and we prayed for our neighbors, and it's just hard to keep at it. It's, it's hard to see results. I mean, literally thousands of people don't come in West Wichita uh, because we've been praying for them, and so you get a little bit discouraged, and you, you forget to see the bigger picture. But I can tell you this from my own experience this week. I've asked you to pray for our education ministry, for our confirmation ministry, and my soul has been so filled with your prayers. And I'm so thankful and ask that you would continue to do that. Because we really are in this, this watershed moment, this new season of transition of what's going to be coming. We don't know. We need to be following Jesus. And, and, and who are the people Jesus is going to touch with this ministry called Ascension Lutheran? Let's be praying for them. Praying for our, our children, our members who aren't coming. And, and God, you, you can imagine the joy that was in Jesus. It continues. Blessed are the eyes that get to see what you see. Blessed are you who get to be part of this mission and ministry because of Jesus who has rescued us from the pits of of destruction and death, brought us into His family and has asked us to pray to the Lord of the harvest. We're part of that answer and we join in that prayer. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth, to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored. chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in servant here and bless me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O holy 
Merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. Thank you. 